Hey everybody, I got another video for you talking about smooth manifolds, in this case smooth maps on manifolds. I'm going to make this video today a quick one because believe it or not, I have a date. Well, if we're talking about smooth maps on manifolds, we're going to need to start off with a manifold that is itself smooth. Here we're saying it's of dimension n, and a function that maps from our manifold to our k, well, what the hell do we mean by function? I just want to make a little note on that. Look, a fun side note. So I'm going to use the word function for a map with RK as the range, right? It maps to copies of R. I don't care where it starts. I don't care what the domain is, but it spits out couples of real numbers. And map is just any old machine that you're sort of introduced to as a function. The idea that you put one thing in your map or your machine here and you get one thing out. You never put one thing in and get two things out. You might have many to one, but you never have one to many. To summarize that, a function is a map like this, but it outputs elements of RK. So coming back here, we have our function and we call it smooth on our manifold. It takes in points in our manifold. That's what I mean by on the manifold here, on manifold. If for all points in our manifold, there exists a chart in our atlas such that our point is in the open set and our function precomposed with phi inverse, right? this guy's inverse is smooth on its domain, which is going to be phi of u. And note that that lives in Rn. I drew a nice picture, like I usually do, because oh, when I'm learning and someone just gives me this, I go, what? But then someone shows me this and I'm like, oh, all right, I get it, I get it. Just for fun, just for art, I put a little hole in the manifold, whatever. But this is just a manifold. We have our open set. We've got our map that sends that open set into Rn. Again, the dimension of our manifold is n, and that's what that means. And so here's the function that we're talking about. It takes in points from our manifold and spits out tuples, k tuples of real numbers. And if we want to talk about its smoothness, what we do is we precompose it with this guy's inverse, which is this function here. And notice it maps from Rn to Rk. We've done multivariable calculus before, hopefully. So we know how maps work from Rn to Rk. Looking at this guy right here, we call this guy the coordinate representation of f. And this is just what I said, domain, range. So f hat is called the coordinate representation of f. If f hat is smooth, we say that f is smooth on m. And this is gonna have to be true for all points in m. f is gonna have to precompose with all the different coordinate maps, but it's the same idea as what we're doing here. So note that if there's some other chart, right, it has an open set, here's our map off the manifold down into Rn, and it's defined on u. Just looking at this open set here, it might overlap. It might have a non-empty intersection with some other open set. Here we call it v. So let's assume that this guy is smooth. Let's, let's assume that we have showed that f composed of phi inverse is smooth right here. Well, we can just compose that with our transition function. So we're going to pick specifically phi composed with psi inverse. If we reassociate over here, these guys are inverses, so they cancel out. That just gives us the identity map. The identity map is the same as doing nothing, so we can just cancel that out. And then we're left with f composed with psi inverse. Well, if we have a smooth function composed with a smooth function, this whole thing has to be smooth. So this guy also has to be smooth. How do we know that this guy's smooth? That's part of the definition of a smooth manifold. We're guaranteed that. Now let's look at smooth maps between manifolds. So a map that takes in points in one manifold and spits out points in another manifold. So similar to before, well, this time we got to start off with two smooth manifolds. Let's call them N and M, capital N, capital M. And they're going to have dimension little n and little m respectively. Little n for manifold big N, dimension little m for manifold big M. A map, we like to use capital letters for maps from one manifold to another. And we call it smooth on n if for all points in n there exists a chart in the atlas on n such that our point is in the open set and there exists a chart on m right that's in the range such that f of p is in v and we're now going to look at this guy we're going to make this new function we're going to give him a hat and it's related to our old function using those 
coordinate maps, and we need it to be smooth. We need this guy to be smooth for us to call our map F between the two manifolds smooth. Once again, I've drawn a picture. So we need this to be true for all points, but let's look at one in particular. So we have some point, it's in our open set U, and it gets mapped over to here, and it turns out that lives in the open set V. We have some coordinate chart for that. And then we have our coordinate map on manifold N, coordinate map manifold M, that should be a little m, our little m. And if we look at that function that we constructed well, that just uses the inverse of phi to go up to N, F to go across to M, and then psi to go down to RM. But in the end, we have a function from RN to RM, where we can use our familiar multivariable calculus from Rn to Rm, which we all studied in second year. So if this guy is infinitely differentiable, right, if, if f hat is smooth, we say that f is smooth between n and m. This is again called the coordinate representation of the map capital F. Just in writing what I said, if f hat is smooth for all points in n, we say that f is smooth on m. And just a note here, our map does not have to hit all of M. It might just hit some subset. And that'll be important later. That is something that will come up. You don't necessarily want your maps to go from one manifold to completely hit all of the points in our second manifold. But one special case of when that does happen is down here. So if F is smooth on N, we just defined what that means. Also, it needs to be a bijection, one to one and on to, also known as injective and surjective, and F inverse is also smooth, so we do all this stuff here backwards, right? F inverse would go from M to N. We say that F is a diffeomorphism. So once again, F needs to be smooth, its inverse needs to be smooth, and it needs to be a bijection. If there exists a diffeomorphism between two manifolds, we say that those manifolds are diffeomorphic. That's like when you have two groups that are isomorphic to each other, it's the same group all of the information encoded in one group is encoded in the next group, probably in a slightly different way, but it's still the, fundamentally the same group. The equivalent to that, the an analogy when you're analyzing smooth manifolds, are diffeomorphic manifolds. If you understand everything about one manifold and it's diffeomorphic to another, then you understand everything about that second manifold. All right, thank you very much for watching. Uh, we're gonna be looking at a special case of smooth maps on manifolds where the output over here, where K is just one. So, so we take in points in our manifold and spit out just a real number. Every, every point on our manifold has a real number associated with it. That is a special class of smooth functions on our manifold and that will be very useful to us coming up in the future. Also, a fun little exercise for the viewer is to look at capital F mapping between one manifold and another, and look at the case where our second manifold is just RK. And you'll find that our second definition that we had here actually just reduces to this one. Because remember that the charts for RK is just the identity map. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.